Having worked with thousands of SIBO patients from around the world through my one-on-one SIBO coaching program and also my group coaching programs like my SIBO five-week challenge, I have come to see many people who relapse with SIBO. And I can tell you that the top reasons why people relapse with SIBO are... The first one is that they have not cleared SIBO in the first place. Often they do a preliminary breath test, they get given a short, say 14 day course of antibiotics, and then they're sent on their way. They're not retesting at the end of their treatment to know whether in fact they cleared the overgrowth and they're relapsing quickly, often within a few days to a couple of weeks. So testing at the end of treatment to determine if your bacterial overgrowth has reduced is really important because then that tells you whether you need to do some more treatment or whether it's time to go into repair and maintenance phase. The next biggest mistake I see people make is that they do nothing to support the gut to return to normal functioning. So we do our SIBO treatment, we reduce the overgrowth of bacteria and or archaea, and then what? We're just expecting the gut to go back to normal. Well, I like to say use the analogy that it is like breaking your leg, getting your plaster cast removed, and then going for a 10K or 10-mile run. You're expecting too much of a damaged, broken gut that is in recovery mode. So we need to help heal it, particularly the use of a prokinetic so that we can support the normal function of the motility of the gut. I find extremely, extremely beneficial for people, but also looking at the state of the gut. Do you have a permeable gut? Is there leaky gut at play? Um, How's the mucosal lining of the gut? Is there damage to the villi and microvilli? Are there other factors going on still, such as a candida overgrowth? What is going on in the broader gut? Have you even looked at the large bowel? You might have dysbiosis going on there, as well as having had SIBO in the small intestine. And then there's the lifestyle aspect. Recovery is often a mental game as much as it is a physical game. And if you are stuck in a sick mindset in that you think yourself as sick, you think of yourself as poorly, you feel like you're never going to improve, then I'm sorry to say, but I see all too often people with that mindset will often return to being sick. So what are you doing to put your body in a state of recovery rather than keeping it into a state of sickness? And then additional factors like your sleep, how you live your life, whether you're living to help recover and repair or whether you're hindering your recovery are extremely important to address. Uh, And then other factors such as the toxin exposure. Are you putting a lot of stress on your body through toxins, be it plastic exposure, the foods that you're eating, the chemicals that you're putting in and on your body, et cetera. All of these factors are so critical to the recovery from SIBO. And I go through this and more in my Living Well with SIBO five-week challenge. So if you'd like to delve into how you can use the five key pillars to health to truly recover from SIBO, I'd love to have you join the five-week challenge with me.